Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, okay. Well, as Richard mentioned, I will be doing the demo and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give as much explanation as I can as I'm doing this stuff, but time constraint, you know, I wanna get everything done. So I'm gonna be kind of flying through this stuff. <laughs> um, I wanna show you first, I created some uh, wireframes of, of what we're gonna create first. So this is an application called products. We have a list of products and we have a, a bar chart showing top sales. If I click a product, we'll pop up a window that shows more information about that product. Um, as Richard mentioned earlier, you know, we have data sources, widgets, and then an application. The application will be products. I'm gonna create a data source called products. And then off of that data source, we'll create a product list. I just wanted to get that clear first so you could kind of uh, understand what we're doing, what we're trying to build first. So I'm gonna log in and I'm going to click the Nitro App Builder application. So upon starting Nitro App Builder, you have two sections, data sources and widgets. And we're, we're gonna work in data source and widgets first. I need to create my first data source. So. If I click this plus button, there, there are a couple ways to create data sources. We could do like a wizard type setup. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click add data source. And here we can type in any SQL statement. I'm going to use, as Richard was mentioning earlier, the, the valence assistant to help me here. So the first part of this is it's asking me, do I want to pass some file definitions? So this isn't data, it's just passing the definition of the file. In other words, the, 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 the column name and the column description. So we have a table called VX products. So I'm gonna send that. It gives me the list of everything you know, that, that it'll pass. You know, if I say, oh, don't, don't include this field, I can uncheck it. Um, in my data source, I wanna have all products and then I wanna get, the, I, I also want the total sales of the products and the total on-hand inventory. So I'm also gonna include an order detail file, and I'm also going to include an inventory file. So now I press continue. So here, you know, we just kind of describe it and give some samples of what, you know, what, what you might, what you might ask. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm just gonna paste this in, so save myself some typing here. I want all product columns and I want a total of sales, quantity sold and the on-hand inventory for each product. So let me just ask it. So this is interpreting, you know, my file structures now and hopefully coming up with a useful SQL statement. So it did, um, you know, it was smart enough to say, oh, let me do the mappings here. And I can also go back and forth with it. Like I might say, yeah, you know, uh, I want to use use subqueries instead of the summary columns. You know, so now we'll take that statement and hopefully, you know, change it how I asked. So let me just give it a second here and wait. And OK, so I'm just going to click copy and paste. It's going to bring it in and I'm going to go to preview. So that gave me my data source. I'm going to save this and I'm going to call it products. So now you see we have a data source called products. I can create widgets off of my data source. So I'm going to go to create widget. First, I'll click here and just show you. Here are the various widgets you can create. I'm going to create a grid because remember what I'm creating is this. I'm going to create this list here. So I'll include product. It's asking me what columns do you want to include in your list? Description, UPC code, uh, class, unit of measure, and let's say price. I'm just gonna go here to take a look and see this is kind of a, this is a preview of what it'll look like. And I might wanna change some things. I don't, I don't like the, uh, the heading of unit of measure. I wanna shorten it, make it UOM, and I want this to be formatted as money. So I'll just, Click in here, do UOM. Maybe I'll center align it on my price. I'll go to formatting, and then we have all sorts of built in formatters. I'm going to choose this money. Let's just take a look at it. 
Okay, looking better. I'm going to remove paging. Notice it's paging my results. And then I'm going to add a search. So I'm just going to add a built-in search here. So that way I could type in and, you know, it'll limit my results. So let's just save this as product list. Now I'm going to go to apps. I'm going to create our app in stages. So apps, add app. First thing it's asking me, what widget do you want? What widgets? I only have one. I'm going to add it. I'm going to put an app bar title called products, and I'm going to save this. I'm taking all the defaults. This kind of gets into what Richard was alluding to earlier with administration. We could change all this later, but I'm just taking all the defaults. And now I should have this products app available. So here's my products apps. And it doesn't really do much now. It's just a grid, right, that I can search. So let's create this now. So I'm going to create a new data source called product sales summary, and I'm going to create a bar chart over that. So going back into App Builder, and I'm going to go to data source and widgets, and I'm creating another new data source. Okay. And in this case, I will, um, let's see here. I'll, I'll use the, uh, I'll use the assistant again. So VX products. And then I also want order detail. And per product, give me the total sales for the current year. And how about the previous? the previous year, order the data, sorry, order the data by sales descending for the current year. Okay, let's see it. I think that looks good. So let's just preview the data and it looks like I'm getting by product, current year sales and previous year sales. Good. So let me save this and I will call it product sales summary. So now right away, I'm going to create that bar chart against it. So I'm going to go to create widget, charts, a bar chart. Okay. So Charts, what are the data fields? Well, I want the uh, current year sales. I want the previous year sales and my label will be product. It's so not to lay the chart out. I'm gonna limit it to the first 10 results. Okay. And I'm going to put a title on this we'll call it top sales. And these, this data here should be money. So I'll represent it as money. So I'll go to data access and Click the formatting, make it money. And I'll put a legend on here as well. So the legend will go up top. This will be called current year. And this will be called previous year. Okay. And let's just save it. And we will call this the product sales bar. Okay. So now I have, you know, another widget. So I'm going to go back to my app and I'm going to just click the app to go in edit mode and I'm gonna add my other widget. So I'm just gonna click add product sales. It's gonna put it to the bottom, but now I can hover over and I'll get arrows to move it. Yeah, I wanna move it up, okay? And I'm gonna to go to settings here and I can you know, adjust the margin. I'm just gonna make the, the left margin zero here. And let's see, let's, let's put a theme on the app too. I'm gonna to go to theming and I'm gonna make it uh, this one, save. Let's save the app. So now I want to reload. I want to reload this app. I want to run it again. I can close the app and, and and run it again, and it should look different. Okay. So now we got our two widgets. So now I need to put in this part. When I click, we show a pop up window, right? So if I go back, sorry, I'm going to use the same data source, but I'm going to create a new widget called Product Form. So back to App Builder. Back to data source and widgets. Products. Create widget form. Okay, so typically the form, you select the fields you want. I'll just do that quickly to show you. I might say, yeah, you know, I want these to be editable. Um, 
you know, and it kind of just lays it out. I can group the fields if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to use the valence assistant to just try and do its best. Okay. So um, I'm just going to uncheck this and just let it do its thing. So let's, uh, I just want to give it like a, a, a brief explanation of what I wanted to do. So use all available columns. Um, this form is showing attributes of a product. Uh, group, group it as you see fit. And then, I don't know, maybe feel free to change field labels. You know, like maybe it doesn't like standard cost. It's going to change it. All right. Let's just see what we get. So it's it, it knows about all of our data here, and it's going to try and group it appropriately. Um, let's see. So when it comes back, there we go. So, you know, it kind of gave me this, this object showing me what it wants to do. And all the way at the bottom here, I could just hit apply. I'm going to hit apply. And it did something. And let's see what happens. Okay. So it, so it changed it for me. Okay. You know, I might, I can, I can then further refine it. Like I might change the number of columns here to just say one, to just go top down. I could have chatted back and forth with the assistant to tell it to do it, but I didn't. Um, I'm just going to refine this a little bit, like maybe on our pricing fields, you know, I'll, I'll format it as money, like standard cost should be money. Um, default price should be money and sales should be money and let's just see what it looks like okay let's save it product form okay i'm going back to the app i'm going to incorporate it i'm going to add a widget i'm going to hover over i'm going to add it as a pop-up so now when i click this row i want that pop-up to show richard mentioned behaviors earlier i'm going to go into behaviors no time to explain this, but here's my product list. On a row click, it does nothing, no action. Well, I want it to filter a widget. What widget do you want it to filter? The form. Okay, tell me the relationship of how do I filter this data down? Well, I know my database. It's product to product. Save, save, save. And I'm going to rerun my app. I'm going to do a shortcut. If I right click and do reload frame, it's the same thing as me closing it and opening it. So now let's see, when I click this, good, got it. Let's go to step two. I wanna change this a little bit. Now when I click, I wanna go to a whole new section with some more data. And then it, this just kind of takes me back, back and forth, okay? So I'm going back into App Builder. And we are going to create yet another data source. We're going to create one that has inventory. This time, I'm just going to do it like this. Select star from VX, I, and B. No, you know, I don't want to overkill. No reason to use the assistant here. Product inventory, I'll call it. And I will create a grid off of this. So uh, let's take warehouse, aisle, row, tier, and on hand. I'll change the field labels. Call this row tier. Um, I'm going to set all the widths to be equal. And I'm going to center align these. And I want to summarize the on hand, the on hand quantity. I want to total it up. Okay. So let's just see what this looks like so far. Okay. I'm going to remove paging. And how about we give it a title of inventory? Okay, save. This is the product inventory list. Okay, now I want to create a uh, kind of like a sales breakdown. So if I go back, I want to create a sales breakdown of this product. So I'm going to go back into a data source and widgets. And once again, I'm going to use this, the assistant because this is kind of a complicated statement. Um, I know I need my order header. I know I need my order detail. Oops, I think I had a space there. 
And I also want my customer header because I want to be able to extract the customer name. And let me continue. And let's say, let's um, let's summarize product sales and quantities by customer name and year. So basically I want I want five columns. I want the customer name, the order year, the product, how about total QTY and total sales. So it should honor those names that I gave it and you know actually make those the the the, the column names. At least that's the hope. Let's see. All right. Uh looks looks good to me. Let me copy and paste it in. Let's preview it. Okay. Let's save it. I'm going to call this the product product sales breakdown. And then I'm going to create my grid off of this. So right away I'm going to create a grid. And let's see. Let's uh let's include the customer, the year, the quantity and the sales. I don't need to include the product because I'm going to go into the product. So we'll call this customer, we'll call this year. Uh, let me center align it. Uh, I'm going to put some hard coded widths on these 150 pixels each, we'll say. And this will be quantity and this will be sales. I want to total up the quantity. I want to total up, total up the, the summary. And let's just put some formatters. I'll, I'll put a formatter on the quantity as well. I want it com I want commas in my numbers, let's say. And let's go to configure and we'll give it a uh, a title of sales breakdown, let's say. Sales breakdown. And I will remove paging. And I think that's good. I think that's what we want. Let's uh, save it. Product sales breakdown list. Now I'm going to add these into my app. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to add an entirely new section. An app can have more than one section. I just created a detail section, and then we also had our main section. Every app has a main section. So I'm going to go into my detail section, and I'm going to add the widgets that I want. So just to refresh ourselves, you know, we started here. I click. I want to go into a new screen, a new section. I'm going to reuse my product form, and I'm going to put in my two new widgets here, and I'm going to have a back button to go back. Okay. So I'm in my detail section, which is blank right now. I'm going to click Add Widget. I can go to Current Widgets and say, well, yeah, actually, I want to move this current product form into this, into this uh, section. So I'm just going to click that. And now I'm going to Add Widget. I'm going to add a utility widget here just to show you different things. We can have a vertical layout. I'm just going to give it a name of right because it's going to be on the right hand side of the screen. Now I can move that. So now I'm going to add this is think of this as a parent. I'm going to add my two widgets into this parent here. OK, let me just go to the settings here. I'm just going to remove some just clean up my margins a little bit. Okay, I'll put a zero margin here. Okay, so now that's kind of, that's looking like what we want. So now when I click this list, I need to, you know, make it go to that section. So that's back in behaviors. If I go to my product list, we already have that filter widget from the product form, right? So that, that one's good, but I have two other widgets I want to filter down now. My product inventory, which will be product to product. And then I want to also filter down my product sales breakdown. And if I look down here, there's product, product, save. And then I'm going to do another. There's all sorts of actions you could do. One of them, the thing I want to do here is I want to show section detail. Okay. And I also want to add a back button to my detail section. So I can just click here, add button. I don't want any text. I'm just going to choose a nice icon, like a back icon. I'm going to put it at the top, align it to the left, save, on click, show previous section. 
save, save. And let's retry it. Okay, here we go. All right. Back. Okay, these totals should all match. We got the 24036, the 8883885, the total on hand. So there we go. We I'm happy we got through both iterations of, of the app. I know I flew <laughs> and didn't give much explanation, but there's you know, there's a lot more you can do. We're just creating a simple display only dashboard. So any questions? Uh, Sean, I did have a question from the Q&A section uh, that maybe you could talk about. It doesn't have anything to do with the AI stuff, but it's about uh, change management. Um, somebody was asking, uh, somebody named Dean has asked, uh, like, if you have an app in development, how would you move that to like QA and live? Yeah. Uh, would you mind just showing that? Sure. So I'm an app builder. And as Richard showed earlier, I can remember he went into the instance manager so let's just see do we have we do have we have some instances here so i'm in the vv demo 63 there are two other instances there's a base instance and then I, we have this other vv serve 6 so let's just pretend i'm in the development instance which is demo and let's pretend this is the qa instance vv serve 6 there's a number of ways i could do this i can go to export to instance and what that'll do is that'll export the application into that other instance. And it's just telling me what it's going to do. Um, you know, alternately, if it's, let's say it's on another system, I could just export the save file. You know, Sean testing, I'm just putting a note. And this will create a save file. So this is a save file that I can move to another system. I can see it here too. Like you will be able to see, this is the one I just created, this, this save file here. So yeah, we have ways of, you know, exporting apps, widgets, data sources, you know, this is all, I'm at a data source now, I could do it at that level too. I'll just uh, add to that as well, that uh, there is like an exit program too, that you can use to call your own, maybe existing change management system, or, um, you know, if you have to, if you have to like register something, there's an exit program for that, for, for that integration. Um, and I also wanted to say, like, as I was watching Sean go through that, you know, it's amazing to me as a, as a valence developer, like part of my job is I work with customers to develop applications or help them develop applications with valence and Nitro app builder. And just like, I am just so blown away by how fast you can do like the SQL statements and then also lay out forms. And maybe it's not perfect on the first call, but then you can adjust it like it's unbelievable time saver. Um, and I really, just personally speaking, I really want to get this to as many customers as I'm working with it as quickly as possible because the productivity increase is going to be incredible. So Sean, can I just ask you, like, yeah. this, is real, this is really the first time that you've done a demo where there was no pre-defined components. Like, uh, normally what we do in a, like a 10 minute creation of a, of, of an app is we'll create a grid or something, something that's like fast, right? Like you've got things here where, you know, you've got a grid, you've got a form, like how much time would it have taken you to even using Nitro app builder to have created all of this with all of the, the headings and the chart and the form and the form layout and the SQL statements, like how, just thinking of how long you took, how much time would it have taken to do this manually oh like a manually coded application yeah no no like in nitro app builder without the ai without the valence oh without assistant. the ai without the valence assistant yeah oh yeah I'm i mean you on this I mean, file in, a little bit yeah like, i mean in, in this case you know i mean those sql statements were fairly simple uh mm -hmm. but it it does help and then you know that form so like the we've worked with forms that have hundreds of columns and and that's a real pain to uh, to to organize. And not only that, sometimes we're working on a customer system and we don't know their business. And I don't know in the insurance term of you know X Y Z, but that does. So mm -hmm. it it does a good job of of grouping things. So in in terms of like a form, like it could save me hours. 
mm-hmm. that let's say you know and then do it in 20 seconds so but yeah i mean like you said it's all new so i don't i don't have a great grasp on everything right now i know it saves time <laughs> uh, yeah like i just as i was watching you do this like you're just sort of nonchalantly going through and you've created this sql statement that's summarizing columns and then right getting this form layout and i'm just like wow that's like incredible you know and i i'm usually downplaying everything i'm like just show the features and customers will decide on their own but like i personally am really excited about using this at customer sites so i Maybe think i can all, sell you a license richard you'll sell me a license a personal yeah. license <laughs> um <laughs> I would say, uh, I think, Sean, if you're finished, we can let Patrick uh, yes. go. Um, but real, I don't... real quick, uh, guys, uh, there's been a couple questions about examples, and I don't think you had a chance to show that on the portal. Maybe, Sean, you could just kind of show that there's a bunch of pre-built example apps out there. Yeah. And we yeah. haven't even talked about calling RPG programs and stuff, which is a big part of, of it, obviously, as an IBM I developer. Yeah. All right. Um, Sean, would you just for, um, just so people know, and we're seeing your screen at the moment, could you just go to cnxcorp.com so I can point out a few things? So if anybody wants to try Valence, you can just go to cnxcorp.com, click downloads. Right now you can trial Valence 6.2, which is the, the top one on the list. So you, if you just download it and follow the Valence installer, it's very easy to install and get started. And that'll help you, you know, you can play around with all the features in Nitro App Builder. It will not have the Valence Assistant in it. That is coming with Valence 6.3. But if you download the software and we should have your email address from attending this uh, Lunch and Learn, you're going to get a follow-up from us. Um, I would say the most would be a few weeks, but probably sooner saying that Valence 6.3 is available. Then you can come and download that as well, and it'll just upgrade your 6.2 to 6.3, and then you can use the Valence Assistant 